Welcome back. It seems we've made it to the Brassicans... Homeworld? Not sure if this is their homeworld. It may just be part of a test. If it is their homeworld, it is definitely strange. It's also the um, only time we make a mission transition without going back to the Enterprise, because we just started the final mission of this game. Which also means that we were not told our score for the previous mission. And because this is the final mission, uh, we also will not get another chance to look at the captain's log on the Enterprise. So I'm not sure if you just don't get told or if the score for the previous mission and this one are combined, because you do get one final score at the end. So I'm not entirely sure about how that works. In any case, it looks like the Brassicans have another test for us. Let's first discuss amongst ourselves. One of the strangest projections you've ever seen. And look around a little bit more. And as far Dim as can. colors swirl in all directions, so indistinct in form and pattern as to be unsure anything's there. Doesn't look like there's really much we can look at here. The captain seems edgy, alert to danger. That's not strange, considering the circumstances. The doctor is queasy from the bizarre distortion of space around him. A Klingon self-assured in his power, yet not arrogant. His expression is unreadable. The science officer is intrigued, but wary of an area which fails to conform to the precepts of Euclidean space. The communications officer carefully controls her reactions and observes everything. All right, let's talk to everyone. Everyone all right? No reply. If I was meeting us, I'd be skittish too. We've gone this far, there's no sense in quitting now. It's a good point. Quitting on the tests at this point just seems kind of foolish. If we wanted to do that, we should have just not gone through the door, honestly. I am grateful you included me, Captain. Representing the Klingon Empire, I believe we must not be cowed. Passivity may be regarded as undesirable to them. That's possible, I guess. Captain, even though isolated, the Brassica are quite advanced. It's certain their insights will be unusual and enlightening. The logical course is to establish a dialogue. The Brassica are calling the tune and expecting us to dance, Captain. It might be undignified, but all of us can make valid, responsible choices and stand by the consequences. It seems like it's pretty unanimous. We should go ahead with the tests. Captain Kirk, I am here. Are you ready? Our mandate is to seek out new life, new civilizations. If we must do so, on your terms, we will. Explain yourself. We're not rats to run mazes. We deserve to know what you want. They want to see if we meet their criteria for... Um, ...associating with us, I guess. So we don't really need an answer to that question. We welcome contact with the new race, but you try our patience. No more tests or we'll leave. Now. That is not what everybody else told me to do, so... Our mandate is to seek out new life, new civilizations. If we must do so, on your terms, we will. I'm going to go with this one. Listen, we have modified our legends by what we understand of your species. You will be asked a question and may discuss it. Only one person may answer. Begin. I make the first query. It is that question posed to the heroic companions we call the Gerent. Answer this. Who among you may go to the greatest pains in the pursuit of life? You may talk. I will withdraw until you choose to speak with me. Remember, only one of you may reply. Okay. I guess we have... A series of questions to answer is this test. I wonder if these 
Brassicans that are talking to us now are meant to be the same ones that are talking in the introduction. Their voices are quite different, but then the introduction movie was produced for the uh, sound and speech pack or whatever it was called for the floppy version and not as part of the CD version so it's not that unusual that they would have different voice actors. Look for example at the floppy introduction of King's Quest 6 which has very different voices than the CD version. It's also possible that these are just meant to be different Brassica so who knows. Anyway looks we are now like we're now in the uh, cone world. The Brassican's whiskery tendrils quiver when the mouth tympanum forms speech, but you can't tell what that means, if anything. Indeed, I don't even know what you just meant by that. One of the strangest projections you've ever seen. The captain thinks about options the Brassica haven't anticipated. That's a good idea. We may need to do something unexpected at some point. The lieutenant seems to be in deep thought. The Vulcan is fully engaged in analytical thought. The good doctor ruminates. The Klingon's eyes assess each person in turn, leaving a sense of judgment failed at every hand. So what we're supposed to do here is talk to everybody. They will give a case for why they have the right answer, and then the signed who has the right answer, and let them talk to the Brassica. So let's talk to everyone. I believe I'm the obvious answer to this question. I'm a ship's captain. 430 lives depend on me, on my every decision. Our mission is, in part, to seek out new life, new civilizations. So it comes down to me. Am I any different? Does not my crew live or die on my decisions? I explore space for the Klingon Empire! The Starship Captain stands as representative of the United Federation of Planets. Many races whose goals and visions for the future are pursued together. Who shoulders the greater weight, Captain Clark? No one has ever accused you of modesty, Kirk. See it as you will. You, surrounded by your fellow humans and officers, or me, the sole representative of my empire. Hmm. That does seem a bit generic an answer. And I kind of agree with Captain Clark that there really isn't an awful lot of difference between him and Kirk in that regard. I am the right choice, Kirk, and I'm certain you understand why. Again, no real difference between Kirk and him. I may not be Vulcan, but I'm the logical choice. Who goes through more pains in pursuit of life than a doctor? Good point, I guess. The Brassican's question is not, properly speaking, a riddle. A riddle has a right and a wrong answer. This is more philosophical, with many possible answers. Then how can we possibly answer correctly, Spock? Or can we? One answer will seem more satisfactory than all others, Captain. At least we can eliminate you, Spock, from this horse race. I don't see any right answer for you to be the person who would go to the greatest pain in the pursuit of life. On the contrary, Doctor. Respect for all living things is fundamental to Vulcan philosophy. A rigorous adherence, unlike humans' variable justifications. You aren't suggesting, Spock, that you're the right choice. I believe I may be, Doctor. The Brassicans may agree. That seems unlikely. I question your logic there, Mr. Spock. Gentlemen, I think you may be overlooking a fundamental difference between me and everyone else here. I am the only female, the only one capable of bringing forth new life. That qualifies me as the one among us who might go to the greatest pains in the pursuit of life. Jim, it's evident that each of us believes we're the right choice. I'm reasonably sure I'm the person they have in mind. But I can see everyone can make a case for themselves. As indeed we have, Doctor. I fail to see how further discussion will alter the situation. Either you must come to some decision, weighing the strength of individual opinions, or I get some hints out of our green host. Yeah, they've all made good points. Uhura seems to be the most literal in terms of pains in the pursuit of life, childbirth. If that is the right answer, then we're lucky that we have a woman with us, I guess. 
Especially considering the only reason she's even here is because she was there to uh, repair the communication system. Which involved her just, you know, attaching some wires. Didn't really seem like that was something that only she could have done. But if that is the right answer, I guess we're lucky to have her. And yeah, we can try to get more hints out of our hosts. Which I don't believe affects your final score for this mission, so let's see what they have to say. They can give us some indication as to what kind of answer they're looking for. We have our answer. Are you ready to hear it? We have questions to ask. We have our answer. We have questions to ask. Very well. Ask. What consequences result from an incorrect answer? That's actually a pretty good thing to ask. The overall test will likely continue, Captain. This is one phase, and we are examining the whole. What if I were to declare that there's not one right answer, but many? There is just one answer we would consider wholly correct, Captain Kirk. In reality, you expect us to answer two questions. What we think is right, and what you think is right. We're ready with our answer. In reality, you expect us to answer two questions. What consequences result from an incorrect answer? You are clearly a race who values fairness. Shouldn't we have more information before we try to answer? What consequences? You are clearly a race who values fairness. Very well. No. It was agreed they shouldn't be given special assistance. Their complaint is valid. Different species think differently. A hint seems appropriate. They must show the faculties to think through problems. Well, Captain, are you positive you want a hint? Yes, get on with it. No, don't bother. We'll give our answer. Yes, get on with it. Captain Kirk, among our species, quality is often valued over quantity. We laud the contribution of the individual, even potential contribution by one who is gifted over the united actions of many. You call that a hint? Let me think some more. Maybe that'll help one of my companions. No, I think that tells us what we need to know. We are ready now. Let the one who would answer be the next one to talk. I don't know if that changes anything they say. I am the right choice, Kirk! Doesn't look like it. Well, based on the hint that they uh, respect the individual and consider quality over quantity, all of the answers we've been given have to do with caring for a large number of people. Kirk thinks himself more important than Klar because he represents the entire Federation. Both Kirk and Klar think they are the right answer because they hold the uh, life of their crew in their hands. McCoy deals with his patience, and Spock had a vague uh, response about his ideology of respecting life, which is basically all life, whereas Uhura is the only true individual answer because she individually has the potential to give birth and endure that pain in the pursuit of a single life. So I believe that Uhura is in fact the right answer. Alone among the people here, I am female and capable of childbearing. The nurturing of a new life remains a uniquely female labor. Certainly, I am the one among us who might go to the greatest pains in the pursuit of life. Your answer is accepted. However, this is not to say whether this answer is right or wrong. Where is he gone? The next question awaits, Captain Kirk. You're nothing like the Gerund, who hold a special place in our memories. The second question, who among you wrestles most intensely with the chaos of life? Talk amongst yourselves. I will answer questions if I can. In the end, only one may reply. Okay, so it seems that the person who gave the answer is removed from the group. So I guess if she wasn't the right answer, but is instead the right answer here, we have a problem. And they gave no indication of whether or not what 
we picked was right, so that's also nice. Anyway, let's uh, talk this through and see what we can figure out as the answer to this question. The colored combs atop the Brassican's strange-looking head catch your attention, but you do not know what significance they might have. One of the strangest projections you've ever seen. Emotions are not apparent, but clearly his mind is racing. Captain Kirk looks ready to explode with intensity. Um, that seems over the top. The Klingon is paying very close attention to all that occurs. Dr. McCoy feels slightly out of his depth. As would anybody here, I think. Let me explain. I believe I am the appropriate answer to this question because of my position as captain of the Enterprise. A captain sailing the emptiness of space. Lives that rely on your every word. I thought that too, Kirk. It is not sufficient. I disagree, Klar. Without a strong hand at the tiller, shipboard life would dissolve into chaos. Those demands make me the best answer. Hmm, I don't know. The previous question makes me skeptical whether or not that's the, what they're after. As with the previous question, this is a question of judgment, Captain. Meaning there's no right or wrong answer. I suspect the Brassica would disagree with you, Captain. There is likely a specific answer they expect. I can only speculate. And? Each of us can best make his or her own case. As science officer, I believe myself likely. It is the very heart of science to attempt to comprehend the fundamentally chaotic nature of the universe. Chaotic? If the universe wasn't ordered, we couldn't make sense of it, Spock. As you are certainly aware, Doctor, chaos defines the very nature of patterns. However, this does not mean random. Well, that may be. On the other hand, I would be the last person to say a Vulcan wrestles with any concept. And don't you raise your eyebrow at me, Spock. There is some truth to that, I guess, but it sounds a little bit more philosophical than what they seem to be after. It's obvious you have never spent time among Klingons, Kirk. The life of the Klingon warrior is the struggle between control and chaos. Controlled chaos is how you describe it, Clark? I'm surprised. Clearly, the Brassica know more of us than you. And I am certainly the one who these aliens intend to answer. My lineage extols the tradition of Kallas. My reasons for selecting myself are at least as good as yours, Clark. Indeed, we again have no real distinction between Kirk and Klar. Spock's on the right track, Jim, but he's still wrong. I focus on the chaos of life. Who struggles more than a physician? Made some sense, McCoy. And I've heard you were a humble country doctor. Sounded more like a Vulcan. No need to be insulting. Gentlemen, gentlemen, we've had enough chaos to deal with. Interesting analysis, Bones. However, I think I might be the one the Brassica have in mind. I think McCoy's answer is the most literal. And if Uhura was the right answer to the last one, which was also the most literal, that gives some points to McCoy here. As before, however, we can ask for hints. We are ready with our answer now. We have questions. We are ready. We have questions. Very well. Ask. What have you done with Lieutenant Uhura? I demand an explanation. We will not discuss this. Then this encounter is over. You've given me no reason to trust you. I won't sit by and let you spirit my people away. I don't think that has... Uh, any use to say that. I don't like it, but I'll take it, for now. I'll expect an explanation before this is over. Then this encounter is over. I don't like it, but I'll take it, for now. We are ready with our answer now. I want to question you further. Very well. Ask. What have you done with Would you define some of the words you're using to give us a better idea of what point you're trying to make? Define words? I am not one who thinks you should have any assistance. Others among us are less hostile, Captain. Perhaps a broad hint, something less definite than the words. Define the words? We communicate clearly. Without ambiguity, it would not be a riddle. 
Would you at least explain the context of the words? You are not making a good impression on my associates, Captain Kirk, as I anticipated. What is it you want to find? Explain your use of chaos in this context. Explain your use of life in this context. Explain the phrase wrestles most intensely. Forget I asked. Let's get... Explain your use of chaos in this context. Chaos, Captain Kirk, is the way intellectually sophisticated races understand complex patterns which seem to be random, but are not. The shape of a cloud, unpredictable and changeable, but nevertheless comprehensible. What else do you want to explain? Explain your use explain your use of life in this context. This explanation of chaos seems to point towards Spock's answer being the right one. Although we ask one person to embody the answer, do not imagine a single individual's passage from birth to death as central to this question. That was a big help, wasn't it, Jim? I still think I fit the idea best. As a physician, I deal with life on a grand scale, but only one life at a time. What else do you want to explain? Explain your use of chaos in this context. McCoy has a point Expl there. Explain the phrase wrestles most intensely. How disappointing, Captain. I, of course, expected nothing better. This part of the question addresses the dichotomy of life and death and the eternal struggle between those grand concepts. What else do you want to explain? Explain your... Exp exp that's enough for now. Hmm. This was not as useful as before. Because we had some answers that might point to Spock and some that might point to McCoy. However, I still think McCoy's case is stronger. And it fits more with the first answer in being the most literal answer to this question. So let's try that. I am a physician. I am the one who cares for life and health of hundreds aboard the Enterprise. The patterns of chaos are the patterns of life and death. And every day of my professional life is focused on balancing those patterns towards sustaining the quality of life. I am the one among us who struggles most intensely with the chaos of life. Your answer is accepted, Dr. McCoy. However, this is not to say whether this answer is right or wrong in our sight. You expect me to stand by while my people keep disappearing? The next question awaits, Captain Kirk. Congratulations, Captain. There are those among us. Who doubted you could make it this far. The third question is somewhat different, but our heroes, the Gerund, found the answer. Solve this equation. Pig plus X equals cow. Talk among yourselves. I will answer questions if I can. Only one may reply. Okay. Pig plus X equals cow. That makes no sense. Seems we're in the uh, Marvel world now. And as with Uhura, McCoy is no longer present. The colored combs atop the Brassican's strange looking head catch your attention, but you do not know what significance they might have. The captain controls his impatience, focusing on the circumstances. Mr. Spock finds the situation curious. The Klingon seems impassive, but there's a sense of tightly controlled power below the surface. Okay, um... I sure as hell don't know what to make of this question. Let's see if our heroes do. We need to think. I'm sure we can work out the trick they're posing with this question. Pig plus X equals cow. I heard the question quite differently. What are you saying? The question was pig plus X equals cow. Interesting, Kirk. I heard tlok pok plus X equals srok nav. To humans, it would translate to plant plus X equal 
hive paper. What did you hear, Vulcan? Chicken plus X equals reality. Each question starts with something edible. Pigs and chickens are farm stock, are they not? Many elements of Federation society do not consume animal flesh, Captain Clark. In principle, however, you are correct. But I believe the answer is, there is no logical answer. I don't think so, Spock. But I don't like yours either, Clark. Where's the relationship between a cow, hive paper, and reality? Difficult, I admit, Kirk. But they must be connected. I'm not impressed, Clark. The Braska addressed me first. I think we need to answer pig plus X equals cow. You try my patience, Kirk. There's a pattern and an answer. A talk, talk grows a flower that ka-cha insects visit and ka-cha make nectar and hive paper so flower would work and what does that do for my question or spots your officer was asked to solve chicken plus x equal reality the philosophers of Bolare 7 maintain a celestial bird something like a chicken laid an egg from which the universe hatched the idea of reality began as something egg-shaped was an early theory of Klingon cosmologist. You're stretching, Clark. It all fits. The Tlokpok flower is egg-shaped. Therefore, I believe egg is correct for all equations. Kirk, in a barter society, might not a cow be worth, say, a pig with a clutch of eggs thrown in? Clark, I come from a farm on Earth in a state called Iowa. Your solution makes some sense, but so would pig plus crate of apples equal cow. It's something else. If I may, based on the evidence, I remain convinced there is no answer. A time will come when we must answer. I'm willing to let either of you answer. The Brassica will allow only one to answer. Okay, so everybody heard different questions and none of it really makes any sense to me. Klar's attempt at an answer just seems like randomly trying to find patterns in nonsense, so... I mean, you could probably make any answer work with that logic. Still, let's hear what the others have to say. Captain, you hear one question, I hear another. None are sensible. Logic dictates identifying the pattern. I believe the Brassica expect us to realize there is no pattern. Specifically, there is no answer. Honestly, that sounds reasonable to me. More than one question and the answer must solve them all. I've heard nothing better than my answer. Egg, it might be twisted logic, but it works. Yeah, but it's still twisted logic. I think if you talk to Kirk again, he actually gives a more concrete idea of his own answer. Getting more than one question confuses things. I still have a gut feeling that... Pig plus X equals cow is the one. The answer must be something about shifting the letters. I'll get it in another minute. Assume my question is the one to answer. Counting each letter of the words from its place in the alphabet, the equation 32 plus X equals 41 results. The answer is nine, and since I is the ninth letter, I is the answer to pig plus X equals cow. Captain! I like self-assurance, but your belief you are always the answer is pitiful. Why use a human alphabet when not all here are human? You will notice, Clark, that I have the only arithmetically derived answer. Yeah, but it's really no better than Clark's flower egg uh, answer. It's just trying to find a pattern, and you could literally do that in any way you want. I mean, if you're going to mathematically assign values to the letters, then why not treat them as decimals rather than adding them together, in which case you get a completely different numerical answer. Let's see if we can get some hints out of our host. We are ready with our answer now. We have questions. Very well. Ask. If you tell us more about the gerund, maybe we can figure out what they would have answered. That's an interesting idea. Not one I think they're likely to go with, but we can try. The questions we ask have been suitably modified to allow for differences between your people and ours. Is there something else? We are ready with our answer now. I want to get back to a different question. Very well. Ask. If you tell us more about the gerund, 
Maybe we can figure out what they would have answered. I'd like to know who these gerund are. There are different species or like a, a class of people within the Baraska? I really don't know. Can you give us a hint? Can you at least tell us if we've been answering you correctly so far? I sincerely Please doubt it. Please repeat the original question. If you tell us, can you give us a hint? Very well. A broad hint, if you wish. Let's get on with it. No, skip it. Let's get on with it. Congratulations, Captain Kirk. You correctly know when to quit. There is your hint. Generalize from that to the answer we expect from you in the greater question. Are you ready to answer now, or do you need more time? We are ready with our answer now. Let the one who would answer be the next to speak. Okay, that's kind of interesting. We know when to quit. Based on that, I can only conclude that Spock is right. There is no answer. Everything else is just making up random stuff that happens to fit the question, so... I don't think there's any other choice other than Spock here. The question I heard was, chicken plus X equals reality. This question is nonsensical, as is Captain Kirk's. Therefore, I deduce the answer is that there is no answer. Your answer is accepted. However, this is not to say whether this answer is right or wrong. You plan to make off with everyone? Do you really expect me to keep taking that without protest? The next question awaits, Captain Kirk. I am astonished that an alien like you has muddled your way this far. It is a great honor that we share the Riddle Master's questions to the Gerant. The last question, answer this. There are two present. Only one may go. Why should you be the one to leave this place alive? Discuss this. I will answer questions if I can and will. You might want to discuss this with me to explore your options. Okay. That went in a different direction. But we'll have to answer this question in the next video.